three days after his 22nd birthday, he jokingly said to me on the phone, he goes, Mom, I think you're trying to kill me. And I said, what? And he goes, my stomach is killing me. I started getting severe stomach pains. I felt like I had maybe a little bit of the stomach flu, and I just kind of put it off like, oh, it'll go away, it'll go away. And it didn't get better. It just kept getting worse, and so we took him to the emergency room. They thought it was Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome. He would just lay in his bed. He would barely look at you. He would barely talk because he would just stare at the ceiling and just you could see his eyes quiver when he was awake because you could just tell he was in so much pain. It was just like someone was lighting a fire from within my stomach. One of the surgeons there said, Dave, look, we don't know what's wrong. This was two weeks afterwards, and he kept getting progressively worse and dropping weight just because he wasn't eating. And they said, the slides have come back. It's not Crohn's, and we do not know what's wrong with him. And they said, we think that he should go to the Cleveland Clinic. We got here and right into the intensive care unit. And I have to tell you, it was an emotional moment for me. And I'm thinking to myself, where are we headed? I know I was on the highest level of painkillers they could give me, and I just thought at that point, what happens from here? I, I can't take any more pain medication. You know, if it gets worse, what's the next step for me? You could see the team group up outside the, the hospital room and talk about, okay, rheumatology, what's your opinion? Or gastroenterology, what's your opinion? Infectious disease. I know one thing, they took it personally that they could not figure out what was wrong with this 22-year-old. We were here for close to two weeks. One of the things they kept asking was, do you have any rashes? And he had never had any. Well, I was putting his slippers on his feet that night, and I noticed that he had these really faint pink dots. And when I, he got back in bed and when I took them off, they were more pronounced. So we got a nurse right away and she called a doctor and they came and looked. And so from the biopsy from his foot with the um, sample from his intestine, it that all kind of came together that he had um, this HSP vasculitis. You could definitely see the hope in his eyes because he knew what was wrong with him. And that's all he wanted, was to just know what was wrong. It's a very rare disease and it's hard to diagnose. Your just body attacks your blood vessels, inflames them, and really decreases the blood flow to anywhere it can attack your brain, your eyes, your kidneys. We had no idea that Cleveland Clinic has a center for vasculitis and also some of the top folks in the country. So they started him on prednisone, and within two, three hours, he was just a totally different person. Saturday morning, when we were walking down the hall, we were like, okay, so who is it we're gonna see when we get there? Is it gonna be, you know, Michael? Or is it gonna be the boy that had been in this bed? And we yeah. walked in and he was sitting up and he was actually eating. I just felt like it was such a family environment. And the nurses not only were treating me, they were treating my parents and my family as well. It was just awesome. You've got that positive attitude. It kind of lifts you up. This facility, I feel, saved his life. They should never regret going to school to be a nurse or going to school to be a doctor because they save lives. And it's, it's amazing. I feel like myself again, and I attribute that to the Cleveland Clinic care. And I'm just thankful I can live my normal life before all this happens, so I'm very thankful.